When we read the newspapers, we read about proposals for the Green New Deal or the wisdom of the wall and such, and there are certainly many overdue reforms. But the threshold question not discussed is why government seems to have such a hard time acting sensibly. The poster child for this was the $800 billion stimulus that President Obama got from Congress in 2009, much of which was to be spent on infrastructure. After five years, a report came out saying that barely 3% of it had been spent on transportation infrastructure. And the reason for that, as Obama noted, was that there's no such thing as a shovel-ready project, i.e., the President of the United States didn't have the authority to give the permits to spend the money to fix what everybody knew needed to be fixed. So the goal today is to question the basis on which we've organized modern government. And my hypothesis, which I've argued in a paper that's outside and also uh, more fully in a new book called Try Common Sense, is that we can't repair this system, that we actually have to replace it. We can't repair it because it's impenetrably dense and doesn't let humans make the choices needed to get anything done. One of its side effects is it makes uh, people on the ground also feel suffocated, one of the reasons I think that they voted f for, for Donald Trump. Now, the idea of this governing system is that the proper way to advance public goals is to tell people how to do things, do things correctly, that regulation would be precise and uniform like an assembly line, uh, public choices must be objectively correct, either by complying with a detailed rule or with objective proof. And the reason we have this system, uh, it's, it's a relatively new framework. It only began after the 1960s. It's grounded in distrust, specifically the distrust of humans and human judgment and values. And coming out of the 1960s, this distrust was fully warranted. Racism, pollution, uh, lies about Vietnam, Watergate, et cetera. Uh, and the whole idea we would have this sort of modern system of government where we will avoid bad values by eliminating values altogether. The problem is it doesn't work well. It's a form of central planning. It's certainly not what the framers had in mind when they created a system of principles that allocated um, responsibility to different branches to make choices and the other branches to, to check and balance them. The whole idea of the Constitution was to give the different uh, officials and branches the power to make decisions and then the others to, to hold them accountable. This new framework that we invented after the 60s has grown really in a way that no one intended. No one really designed it. It's now about 150 million words of binding federal law and regulation. It far exceeds the capacity of humans to understand it. Um, even companies with large, with thousands of lawyers like J.P. Morgan you know, constantly running afoul of it. They can't comply with it. Daily life has become a kind of minefield. Teachers are told never to put an arm around a crying child. Bad joke can get you fired. Doctors and nurses spend half the day filling out forms that no one reads. And people, Americans have now been trained to go through the day asking themselves, can I prove what I'm about to do is legally correct? And it's suffocating to people. Again, I think that's one of the incentives for people to vote for why some people voted for Donald Trump. Now, for decades, the, the public debate, and this continues, has been um, to draw the line between basically pro-regulators and, 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 and deregulators. The deregulators have lost. Uh, the last four Republican administrations have all promised to deregulate and government's only gotten larger. The reason for this is probably because Americans want clean air and Medicare and such. So I think they've been arguing about it in, in, in the wrong dimension. Uh, it's really not what government does as much as how it does it, and that is not allowing people to make sense of their own daily choices. I've written a paper for the forum. It's available somewhere in the back. But in the paper, I look at uh, modern bureaucracy through the lenses of three disciplines. And in each case, 
the structure of modern government is, is indefensible. It violates the basic truths of what everyone agrees are the, are the premises of those disciplines. So in economics, for example, this system doesn't leave room for people to adapt. It makes trial and error basically illegal. It doesn't honor trade-offs of time or limited resources or such. Often you can solve a problem, you can solve 90% of a problem with 10% of the cost. That's how criminal law works and contract law works. They don't try to achieve a kind of a perfect uniformity where every contract goes forward and there's never a dispute over it. We can't eliminate crime with criminal law, and yet we do our best to achieve with a set of laws and principles and enforcement mechanisms, tough enforcement that people generally trust interacting in a free society. But regulation doesn't work that way. It wants it to be perfect. And so it squanders a huge amount of money. Uh, under, in psychology, and this is something I learned more of, actually, I, after I wrote my recent book, uh, I found some material by a professor named John Sweller at the, and his teams at the University of New South Wales. It turns out that external, um, complicated external criteria like um, checklists, for example, or bureaucratic rules, actually use up what's known as your working memory. So, and, and that's the, the, the conscious part of your brain. It actually has limited capacity to deal with, with very many ideas at the same time. And if you have too many external criteria, bureaucratic rules, it makes it uh, very difficult or impossible to draw on your long-term memory, which is the experience and the things where the genius of humans is. So the effect of giving people too many rules is it makes them stupid. It actually makes people not be, I and mean, all the stories you read about in Kafka and Dickens and such, it's not that people are trying to be mean, it's just that they can't even access their empathy. So we've created this system that's actually anti-human. And it's anti-human just by you can evaluate it by looking at the cognitive sciences. And then also, we, um, I look at it through the, through the viewpoint of rule of law theory. You know, law supports a free society by drawing outer boundaries. Uh, you can't steal, because you have to comply with your contracts, you can't pollute, and then in between those boundaries, you're free. And law supports freedom because by protecting against those things, people don't have to be defensive during the day. They can move forward without fearful that the water they're about to drink is adulterated in some way. Bureaucracy also tries to avoid bad things, like, like, you know, sort of adulterated food or such. But it does this by replacing our freedom. Not by walls, but by bringing these tentacles in and telling you all day long how exactly you have to do something correctly. So it, it sort of protects the egg by killing the goose. So you're no longer free, you're free to do things the way someone wrote a rule years ago, tells you to, to do it. So there's a disjunction, and uh, Jeremy Waldron from NYU Law School is going to be here today to talk about this, about sort of the rule of law and, and bureaucracy. Paul Romer, who recently won the uh, Nobel Prize in Economics from NYU, will be here virtually, he's on the West Coast. We had an interesting exchange the other day. He said, you know, Philip, giving officials discretion is a hard sell in the, uh, in the age of Trump. You don't want you know, Donald and Trump's people to go making uh, decisions we see it in the newspaper, and I'm sympathetic to that point of view. But my rejoinder to Paul was, the system of law is not about giving people discretion. It's about giving people responsibility. They're almost, they're not, they're not 180 degrees the opposite idea, but almost. Discretion basically implies do whatever you want. Responsibility is an affirmative duty to do something that's defined by law and enforced by other officials. That's our constitutional framework. So what I'm talking about is a system where people have to take responsibility, the duty, and are accountable, and it's defined. It's not letting people do whatever they want, and there's this kind of 
misconception that if you don't have a clear rule, that anybody can do anything they want to do. That's not the way law has ever worked in the history of civilization. If you find any agency or school that works tolerably well, you'll find people who are doing this. They go to work. They don't have their notes and rule books. They're, they're basically uh, telling. They're, they're trying to make sense of their daily choices. So my thesis here is that's it. This emperor has no clothes. We can't repair it. We have to own up to that fact. No leader is going to come make it work better. We have to replace it with a simpler system that honors and empowers human responsibility. 